heard about veins of gold and veins of silver. I'm going to talk about uh, veins of blood, uh, a little bit different. We are a biotech company. We are developing a drug in FDA clinical trials that grows new blood vessels in the heart and in the brain, and we're treating some very serious diseases. So new blood vessel growth, we all use it all the time. It's called angiogenesis, the growth of new blood vessels in a wounded tissue. This shows a uh, wound in the skin, that circular area. Think of it as a scab. We're looking underneath the scab. You can see those nice, small blood vessels growing. This is what our drug stimulates, the growth of these tiny blood vessels, which heals this tissue. This is our drug. It's a natural product. It's the most potent inducers of new blood vessel growth in our bodies. You use it every day. If you cut yourself, this growth factor heals uh, the wound. So we have produced this using recombinant DNA, DNA technology. It's what's used in the industry. We have unlimited amounts, and we're studying it in these human diseases. <clears throat> Over 75 human diseases are known to be caused by a lack of blood flow, heart attacks, strokes. I'm not going to talk about all 75 today, but I will talk about three, diabetic foot ulcers, we'll talk about heart disease, and then I'll talk about some brain diseases that we're beginning clinical trials on. Okay, these are diabetic foot ulcers, these are nasty chronic wounds. We put the drug directly into the ulcer. We cover it, we treat for five months, and we can completely close uh, these diabetic foot ulcers. This shows you a picture of these ulcers. The top is treated with our drug, heals after 12 weeks. Bottom is placebo, still open after 25 weeks. This was in a phase two uh, FDA trial in the United States. These are the results. We healed 100% of those diabetic foot ulcers were closed with treatment with our drug. We also are treating coronary artery disease. Uh, again, we're not using this in a topical sense. We're injecting it directly into the heart. We use a catheter to get inside the heart. We make about 20 injections where the heart muscle is weak, uh, where it needs more blood. and. The results were very, I supervised this trial, and it was done at about 10 U.S. sites, but one of them, the University of Cincinnati, uh, the patients were very talkative, and actually NBC, ABC News came in and did a uh, piece on them. I'd like to show you that. It's a very short video clip. But since receiving an experimental treatment for his blocked arteries, his pain is gone. That really feel great. Duke was one of the first heart patients in the country to be treated with a protein actually capable of growing That's brand our new drug. arteries. The genetically engineered protein is injected directly into the heart. Within days, a network of new vessels begins to grow around the blockage, increasing the blood supply. Dr. Lynn Wagner showed us the changes in one patient's heart. We see a small, narrow main artery and not very many secondary so You're going to see some blood vessels arteries. growing right in this, this area. This is after the treatment. What we're now seeing is new blood yes. vessels growing here uh, off the, the end of this artery. And the patients themselves? Symptomatically, they're improved within a couple of weeks of the treatment. Just ask Constance Donnelly. Oh, I feel wonderful. I've never felt so good in the last five years. But doctors already see potential in other cases where the blood supply needs a boost, such as strokes and diabetes. Okay, the last medical indication I'm going to talk about is using this drug to grow blood vessels in the brain. We're starting trials in Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. I'll show you some data on uh, animals with Parkinson's disease, but your brain is incredibly vascularized. You have 100 billion capillaries in your brain to nourish about 86 million billion neurons. And this shows these capillaries are very tiny, they're very slender. This shows the red blood cells have to actually line up in single file to get through these capillaries. So you can imagine if these got clogged, uh, in the brain, the neurons around those capillaries would not be doing as well. 
And in fact, we can give uh, animals a stroke. This is the same capillaries. In a normal rat brain, we give that animal a stroke. We decimate the capillaries. The neurons would be suffering. We treat for three, two weeks with our drug. You can see restoration of the capillaries, more back to normal. No drug, these capillaries are not doing well. It's disordered, they're leaky. The animals neurologically are doing much, much worse. We'll be starting a trial in patients who have had a stroke. Uh, it'll be a stroke recovery trial. We're treating uh, Parkinson's disease as well with the same drug. Uh, Parkinson's disease results from death of dopamine producing neurons in, in the center of the, <clears throat> the brain, uh, causing a movement disorder, the tremors and gait disturbances that people have with Parkinson's. Uh, this shows a perfusion scan, uh, showing blood perfusion in the brain of someone with Parkinson's and dementia. You can see blue is normal blood flow, yellow is reduced, and red is severely reduced blood flow. This patient has severely reduced blood flow, not only in the area that controls movement, but also in these areas that are involved in memory uh, <clears throat> and executive functioning. The drug, when given, would also increase perfusion in those areas. We can give this cute little monkey uh, Parkinson's disease by giving it uh, a pesticide, a toxin. This toxin is called MPTP. It was discovered tragically. Uh, some marijuana plants were sprayed in the Seattle area with this toxin. Uh, some teenagers broke into the field, smoked the marijuana, and came down with irreversible Parkinson's disease. Uh, but we use that same toxin to give animals Parkinson's disease. And after a period of about nine months, they come down with all the classical symptoms of Parkinson's, tremor, gait disturbances. We then treat with our drug right here. We can halt that decline. These are motor skills. Without treatment, they continue to decline. With treatment, we reverse that. If you look in the brains of those monkeys, you can look for the dopamine-producing cells. Without treatment, they stain, they stain brown here. With treatment, we're regenerating new dopamine-producing cells in these monkeys, and we think this is what's giving rise to their improved motor scores. Now, in these neurodegenerative diseases, you often accumulate toxic proteins like the beta amyloid in Alzheimer's. These monkeys also accumulate uh, another protein, which is toxic to their neurons. Again, with treatment, with our product, you can see this is swept away uh, more like normal, not completely back to normal, but we feel by getting rid of this toxic protein, we can in, in improve the behavior in these monkeys. So we're doing proof of concept trials uh, in the U.S., in Monterey, Mexico, in Tallinn, Estonia. We are asking, is our medicine safe in humans? We know it's safe in animals. Uh, is it viable? Can we improve patients with these different diseases, including Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's, Alzheimer's, MS, chronic depression, and stroke recovery. Thank you for your attention.